If you have a solid sample and you'd like to characterize it or analyze it, one tool you have is to take its melting point. And what I have here is a melting point tube, which is used. And this is a melting point apparatus. And uh, what we're going to do is introduce a small amount of our sample into the melting point tube, place it in the melt, uh, melt temp melting point apparatus, and it's going to slowly heat our sample. We're going to watch both the crystals and the thermometer, and we're going to make a note of the temperature when our crystal first starts to melt, uh, when it shows just the slightest bit of wetness, and then we're, it's going to continue to heat, and we're going to note a second temperature, uh, the point at which the crystal melts completely and all we have is a liquid. And so what we'll be recording is actually a melting point range. Now the range is important for uh, two reasons. One, the, the melting point is something we can use to compare to a literature value. If we wanted to uh, identify a compound uh, and it has a certain melting point, we, c we could uh, test its melting point to see if that matches. Uh, and it's also important because the, the uh, size of that range tells us something about the purity of the, c the, the solid sample that we have. Because if, as you introduce uh, organic impurities, small amounts of organic impurities, what happens is typically the melting point range widens. Instead of being just one or two degrees, it's, it's going to be a wider range. And also, compared to the literature value, it's usually going to be lower than the literature value, uh, value. So we can maybe measure something about a sample's purity uh, by recording its melting point. Now, there are exceptions. It is possible for mixtures to give sharp melting points. Um, but uh, again, it's a, a good indication that it's very likely pure and, and in combination with other tests like TLC and, uh, and spectroscopy, you could really learn something about a, a sample's identification. So what we're going to do is we're going to first introduce our sample to the melting point tube. I have some really nice crystals here that I got from a recrystallization. Uh, but the, the crystals we want to introduce here are really going to be a, a powder. So I'm going to take those crystals and I'm going to grind them up into a fine powder. It's going to be impossible to take a real big crystal and fit it down into this melting point tube. This melting point tube is uh, sealed on one end, so it looks like a really, really tiny test tube. And what we're going to do is we're going to scoop a small amount of the powder into the top of that test tube, and then we're going to tap it down, and the solid is going to move its way down to the bottom of the test tube. And uh, ultimately, we're going to want to have uh, one or two millimeters of our sample down here. That's all. Very small amount. So as long as you can see it, it's probably enough. If you don't have enough, you can scoop a little bit more of the powder and tap it down to move all the way down to the bottom. Okay? And you can, you can really, uh, if, if you stick too much in the top and it's plugged and it never moves, there, there's no saving this, just discard the melting point tube and the glass waste and start again. You want to make sure you scoop up a very small amount and move it down. Okay, now we also want it to be very tightly packed down there so that it will heat uniformly. Okay, so again, some tapping works like this. Another safe way to do it is to um, have a length of glass tubing and simply drop the melting point tube through that a few times and every time it bounces, it will, um, it will pack it a little tighter. The, the nice thing about this is a lot safer. You have no chance of breaking the tube and, and hurting yourself. Now that my melting point tube is packed with a solid, I'm going to place it into the melting point apparatus. There's actually three slots in here in the melt temp so that I can do, record more than one melting point at a time. And when I turn it on, it's both going to start heating the uh, the sample, and also it turns on a light so it's a easy for me to see the sample. If I look in here through the magnifying glass, I can see uh, the my, my sample and I see my crystal just looks like a white solid. Okay, notice I have my notebook right here. I have a pen ready to go since I'm recording laboratory data. You should be doing so in pen into a permanent notebook or onto a, a data sheet of, of some sort. Um, but this is real data so we want to make sure it's recorded permanently. Now, it's very tempting to uh, the, there's a dial here which controls the rate at which your sample is being heated. If it's a very high melting compound, you do want to uh, heat it pretty quickly or you could be sitting here for quite a long time. If you have an idea of what your sample is and you know about where it should melt, you can heat it kind of quickly till it's within 20 degrees or so of that uh, melting point. 
and then slow it down. But really, you want to be have have it heating just a few degrees per minute because we want uh, we want the crystals to be as hot as the thermometer. Uh, we don't want to have a lag. If it's rising too quickly, we will not get an accurate melting point range. Now, if it's a completely unknown sample, and I have no idea whether it melts at 80 degrees or 200 degrees, what you can do is take a rough estimate melting point first, heating it very quickly and finding out approximately where it melts, and then take a second melting point reading uh, with a fresh melting point tube uh, where you do it more carefully. Okay, so I'm watching this, and what I'm going to be watching for is the first sign of melting. That's when all of a sudden my crystals appear to be wet. There's some there's some uh, some melted sample in there, some liquid sample in there. Now, some other things might happen to the crystals instead of that. Sometimes they might shrink a little bit or shift a little bit. The crystals might be reconfiguring uh, something like that. That is not the beginning of a melting point, and that should be ignored. Okay, it's when you first see that bit of wetness within the bulk of the crystal sample that you record that temperature. And then I'm going to continue watching very carefully. And when the very last crystal disappears and all I have is a liquid in my melting point tube, then I record that temperature as well. And I've completed my uh, taking my melting point range.